In 1892, Tesla was invited to Europe to present the results of his high-frequency experiments. In London and Paris, he amazed scientists and engineers with lighting and electrical effects that looked more like magic than science. He also announced a remarkable new possibility. I would say a few words on a thought which fills my mind and concerns the welfare of all. I mean the transmission of intelligence and even power without the use of wires. I am becoming more convinced daily of the practicality of this scheme. The race for radio was about to begin. In 1888, the German physicist Heinrich Hertz had demonstrated that currents of high frequency emit electromagnetic waves or radio waves into space. But creating a practical means of wireless communication would require a quantum leap in imagination. Hertz created the first radio transmitter and the first receiver. He had showed that you could create an electrical signal in one place and detect it in another place with nothing in between. While in England, Tesla befriended Sir William Crookes, the discoverer of radiant matter. Crookes was a mystic and believed that human beings could communicate telepathically when they were attuned to high-frequency brainwaves. Tesla was skeptical, but one night in his bed, he had a powerful and disturbing vision. I saw a cloud carrying angelic figures one of whom gradually assumed the features of my mother. In that instant, a certitude, which no words can express, came upon me that my mother had died. And that was true. Tesla was convinced that he and his mother were tuned to the same frequency. His otherworldly experience would soon lead him to another revolutionary invention. On his return to New York in 1893, Tesla banished himself from social life and disappeared into his new laboratory on South Fifth Avenue. Following his uncanny intuition, he soon discovered that Tesla coils would transmit and receive powerful radio signals when they were tuned to resonate at the same frequency. Tuning is the key to all radio and television transmission. In my laboratory, I could take in my hands a coil tuned to my body and collect three-quarter horsepower anywhere in the room without any tangible connection. Sometimes I would produce flames shooting out from my head and run a motor in my hands or light six or eight lamps. By early 1895, Tesla was ready to transmit a signal 50 miles to West Point, New York. He could now produce one million volts with his new conical coil. But that year, on the Ides of March, disaster struck. Fire broke out in the building which housed Tesla's laboratory. Everything was lost. Utterly disheartened and broken in spirit, Nikola Tesla, one of the world's greatest electricians, returned to his room in the Gerlach yesterday morning and took to his bed. He has not arisen since. I was devastated. What could I say? The work of a lifetime lost in a fire that lasted only an hour or so. The timing could not have been worse. In England, a young Italian experimenter named Guglielmo Marconi had been hard at work and created a device for wireless telegraphy. Concerned that Marconi would exploit his ideas, Tesla opened a new laboratory and rushed to complete his own system for wireless communication. This patent, filed by Tesla in September 1897, is the fundamental technology for radio. But it would be 50 years before Tesla got credit for his invention.
various people in various different countries uh, uh, had the idea of exploiting this as a means of, uh, of communication. But I think Tesla was the one with the real vision, in which you would broadcast signals on a, a definite carrier frequency, and then you would have a series of antennas that were sensitive to one frequency only, tuned to a certain frequency, and would detect just one of these signals uh, and make an, an intelligible transmission. Uh, and uh, once again, his vision describes the world that we live in.